Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answer to no man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. I love coming across deals on amplifiers. This JBL GTX 500 on Amazon and eBay is currently $119.95 at the time of the video. This model unfortunately is discontinued. It is not listed as a current model on the JBL website, so it may or may not be available when you watch this. This model is replaced by the Club A600, it appears, according to the JBL website. Now, when I looked up the GTX 500 on JBL, I found that it had a copyright date on some of the literature of 2014. They also have a video on YouTube that's from five years ago. So this amp is at least five years old, maybe as much as seven or eight years old. That's okay, because some brands still sell new models that are at least 10 years old. So <laughs> we won't mention any names. This amp shows 770 watts on the box, but it is a GTX 500, AKA 500 watt amp. So why does it say 770 watts? Uh, you know, that's one of those max power things. Let's open up the box here and see what's inside. Not a whole lot. You have the owner's manual, which again gives you the connection guide and also gives you the specs. You get a couple of extra 25 amp ATC style fuses, as well as high level to low level adapters through RCAs to use for your high level inputs. Taking the GTX 500 out of the box, the one thing you notice right off the bat is it feels substantial. The whole outside of the heat sink is aluminum. There is no plastic parts here on the heat sink, which is very nice. As far as dimensions go, on the long side, 9.7 inches for the width, 8.4 inches, and for the height, 2.5 inches. Millimeter equivalents are included as well. For some reason, JBL engineers must have flown back to the 90s and put end caps on their amplifiers. Have no idea why people still do this on new amps. I mean, it looks cool. It covers up the terminals, but geez, these things are gonna get lost over the years. They aren't gonna be with the amps. Nobody's gonna have replacements. Here on one end of the amp, you can see the sub connection for the speaker. This will accept up to eight gauge wire and also go down to about 12 gauge if you need to. You also have two 25 amp ATC style fuses. You have 12 volt ground and remote connection. The 12 volt and ground are four gauge. So you have plenty of uh, meat there for your power connection. The insert terminals have Phillips head screws at the top so you don't need to borrow Allen's keys. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Being an entry-level amplifier from a big manufacturer such as JBL, these amps don't have a whole lot of features. Has a power protect LED, bass control 0 to 12 dB at 45 hertz, frequency 45 to 300 hertz, that's a low pass. Also have a gain control, input level switch, low H1 or H2. You can check out the manual to see the difference in that and the RCA inputs. Also on the bottom, there's an auto turn on feature. That's for signal sensing. You can have that on or off. As for ratings, JBL specifies 4 ohms, 350 watts, 2 ohms, 500 watts. Those are RMS power output numbers, also a 770 watt max number. Now, let's hook this up to the good old amplifier dyno so we can try the test. This amp was set using the DD1 Plus with a 10 dB overlap for the test here. And if you haven't seen these tests before, on the left you'll see RMS power. In the middle, the ohm load. Right, you'll see the voltage on the dyno. You'll also see the remote display so we can calculate the efficiency. First off, 8 ohms mono. JBL doesn't rate the amp at 8 ohms mono. I figured we'd just try it just to see what it did. 278 watts on the certified test, which is up to 1% distortion. Uncertified test. Two, keeps counting, look at that, over 300. 304, 14.36, so it almost reaches its four ohm rating at eight ohms, that's a good sign moving forward here. Dynamic, this amp does have some, a uh, little bit of dynamic headroom, 419 watts, 14.18. Now, this is impressive. <laughs> Efficiency, 96.5% at eight ohms, wow, that's really good. Four ohms mono, rated 350 watts. Let's send that 40 hertz tone into the amp. We get 472, notice it jumped right there at the end uh, at 14.44, so right at 14.44, we got that number. So it's quite underrated. In fact, probably at 12 volts of input, you're gonna get the full output power of this amp. Uncertified up to clipping, it just keeps counting and counting. 574 watts. 14.11, so we did surpass the two ohm rating at four ohms with this amp, crazy. Dynamic, again, 
This amp does have that dynamic burst capability we like to see, 728 watts at 13.6. The certified test we measured right at 85% efficiency, so that's good as well. Two ohms mono, it's rated 500 watts. Certified test first, 682 at 13.79. So again, even if you only have 12 or just over 12 volts, you're gonna get the full 500 watts out of this amp. Uncertified up to clipping, look at this, it went over 900 watts, 913 at 13.79, that is crazy. What about dynamic burst at two ohms? Ha! Yes sir, quad digits here, 1152 watts. Yo, that's kicking it. As far as efficiency, we measured 76% at two ohms. Results here just highlight what you've already seen. I know people are already asking, what about under the two ohm test? If you stick around to the very end of the video, very end, after the end credits, I will show some additional tests. So just have to wait. As far as do it bump though, let's try it on the four kicker 12s. See how it sounds. Let's ask DJ Magic Mike, how low can you go? It bumped and also blew some fuses. That's right, when I wired the kicker quad box up for one ohm, according to the AMM1, it did hit like 1.5 ohms and this did pop the fuse fuses on the amplifier. So I would not recommend running this amp at one ohm. Just keep it at two ohms like it's rated. Now let's find out what's inside. Extra solder for sure. So we take the four screws off using the power drill and yeah, here's what we see. <laughs> Just look at it. Yeah, well. What the heck is that? <laughs> Unfortunately, the amp is mounted away. We can only see the bottom of the circuit board. We can also see the transistors. I'm going to take those or the clamps off the transistors here in just a second so you can actually see what models those are. All right, so now that we've seen that backside, let's talk about the pros and cons, things that I like, things that I think that could be better, or at least things to be aware of. For the good stuff, it did rated power plus. Insert terminals are nice on these cheaper amps. Protection circuit's very good. You're gonna see that come into play later in the video. Build quality is great. These amps you know, feel like tanks. Also, the efficiency we measured was very good on these. Now, as far as the cons, this amp has end caps or side caps. I don't know why this is not the 1990s. There is no bass remote, unfortunately. Single speaker output that could limit some people. Non-Tiffany RCA is kind of expected for a budget amp. Not one ohm rated. Again, wait till the later in the video and we'll see that. Phillips versus Allen, who's better? Oh yeah, and it's discontinued. Well, there you have my test and review the JBL GTX 500. Amp performed well. It sounded great with the subwoofers. Gave plenty of power output. Will easily do its rated power, probably all the way down to 12 volts. So I really like this amp. We just wish it had a bass remote and a few other features, but overall, pretty good. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Please support me, patreon.com slash old school stereo. Big D, I'm out of here. Thing sounds pretty good. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. As promised, let's drop this amp below two ohms, see how it performs. First off, let's try 1.33 ohms certified. And pow, there goes that fuse, 788 watts. Check how much 
we were able to pull almost 100 amps of current with 50 amps worth of fusing. Man, them things must be stretching. Let's try uncertified clipping. Now, we did put two 30 amp fuses in, which must have been way more than 30 amps because these things, check it out here. He keeps going and going and they still didn't pop. <laughs> 1,274 watts at 13.74. I didn't have the clamp going to show what the current pull was, but I'm sure it was well over 100 amps. So let's try dynamic at 1.33. And there you go. Look at this. 1,572 watts at 14.2. And it jumps to 1,580. Now again, it blew the original fuses, so I wouldn't recommend this, but we're going to try the one ohm test. And this test, even with the bigger fuses, it just kind of went into protect 804 watts at 13.95 certified. Uncertified to clipping 850 at 14.15, but again, it did go into protect. It did not pop these 30 amp fuses, so I'm not sure what's up with these fuses. I don't think they're really 30 amp. There must be some Chinesium extra amperage fuses, but check out this. Over 1800 dynamic at one ohm. Let's hit the slide. Hustle, hustle, <laughs> Shit my way, uh, or the highway. 